Okay, yeah, I'm gonna talk about uh, workers in Node, um, which is like the thing that people most likely know me for because I built that into Node, or it, mostly me. Um, yeah, but um, before I get into that, I first wanna start with um, just a quick overview over my first contribution to Node, because I think that's a, I think it's a good example of how open source can work. Um, so, so this code is obviously broken. Like set timeout takes a function argument and a number argument, but not three ones. And well, if you run this code on Node 4, what you get is um, it's going to wait a second and then it's going to try to invoke the 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 wrong 1000 as a, as a function, which doesn't work. And because it waited that one second, um, what you end up with is like a completely useless stack trace. Like it doesn't tell you where in your code the faulty set timeout call was. And so basically this is the essence of my first contribution to Node Core. Like I did this so I could just debug my own project better. I added a single type check to set timeout and that was it. And like contributing to Node or to any open source project doesn't have to be a big thing. It can just be something that, that helps you in the moment, like with a problem with Node that you're having. And um, well, if you think you have a solution for that and that solution fits into Node Core or whatever libraries or whatever you're using, um, well, open a pull request or open an issue if you can. Um, but yeah, back to workers. <laughs> Um, well, I'm, I'm talking like I'm giving these kinds of talk because I want to like give people more insights about what what happens inside Node.js, how our core community works, how we build stuff, how we develop stuff, and like I know that a lot of people in the community just like aren't really um, en engaged in it. So yeah, again, back to workers. So this is a comment that somebody posted in one of the um, issues regarding workers. And so like it says, 50 percent speed up for my algorithm, workers rock. Um, loops needed five milliseconds before workers and now they need two milliseconds. I, I have no idea what the actual um, code is that this person is referring to. Um, but it's just like, it's, it's um, yeah, it's really encouraging to hear like people are using the work and it actually helps them and yeah. Okay, so uh, before we actually talk about workers, like let's think a bit about how Node is, is structured internally. So, like usually, if you have a Node application and you have a have a running process, what you have is you have one process that processes one thread where code runs. Um, if you were Peter's talk yesterday, you know that's not actually true, but it's. I mean, like you you don't see other threads besides the one that you're working with, so it it could as well be true. Um, you have one event loop um, and one JavaScript engine instance, so like one V8 instance, and on top of all of that, one set of node APIs. And um, well, there like there is an issue with having this single threaded approach, um, which is like so it means that. If you're looking, if you're thinking about your JavaScript code, it means that only one piece of code can run at a time. And I mean that that actually makes life easy because you know, okay, only one piece of code can run at a time. You don't really have to worry about like the classical types of race conditions that you have in in multi-threaded code. Or um, yeah, well, it's it's generally just easier to have one thing happen at a time. The the downside of that is like if you have actual CPU intensive code, like you have some heavy calculations that your application is doing, then you're in the position where you can only, um, or where, where that blocks everything else from happening, including like if, if you're talking about a web server or something and you're busy processing a request or something, then that keeps other requests from being handled, which is not what you usually want. So like the, the golden rule of Node.js is don't block the event loop. It's like try to keep it running, and um, yeah, that, that's something that gets tricky with CPU-intensive work. So like you might think like, well, we already have solutions for that, right? We can uh, we can scale 
uh, our applications, and we have well, we have multiple processes that we can spawn, and like the cluster API, if you've ever used that, which is kind of like for this problem, like spawning multiple node processes that essentially all do the same kind of work, and so like they um, they make sure that your your CPU is actually um, um, yeah fully um, fully used and. Uh, well, I mean, th that, that works pretty well. Like, um, you still have this thing where you have one process and it only does one thing at a time, but if you have four or eight of them or whatever your machine works best with, um, you, you, like, it works well enough. But there are some things that you can't do with it. And so, like, you can't share memory between these um, processes. So, like, you have to serialize data and have to send it over and have to deserialize it again. Um, like, we, we use JSON for that, which is um, okay, but it's not the fastest thing. And like, if you could actually share memory, that would enable you to, to communicate between these different things really fast. Um, I mean, there, there are also like, some advantages to this approach. Like, you, you have actually fully isolated processes like whenever something goes wrong in one of them, um, that doesn't affect the others in any way. Or, and you like, because it's a full process, like Node.js can just give you access to everything inside the process. And so like it provides you with the exact same APIs for the most part. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have a problem where you actually want to be able to communicate very efficiently between different threads, um, then the, the typical solution is, is worker threads, which is something that the like, browsers have had for a long, long time uh, in the form of web workers. And so like, instead of having a single thread, the one thing that changes is like you have multiple threads, and for each of these threads, you have a, like a separate event loop, separate JS engine instance, and on top of that, a separate Node.js instance. Or in the browser, a separate well, worker context, which is like kind of different from the main browser context, but yeah. And um, so if you want to implement something like that, so like if, if thinking about this, um, you, you want to have multiple Node.js instances inside the same process. So what Node.js seeks to support, and we're definitely not there yet in a, like, in a good way, but in theory it is supported that we want to enable people to say, um, okay, I want to embed Node.js into my application. Like, that doesn't have, need to do, uh, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with worker threads. Like, you might just want to be able to use Node.js as your scripting engine for your game or whatever. Um, and so, like, in, in theory, like, what we want to support is C++ programs that embed Node. And, well, it doesn't work great. And, um, like a long time ago, like before Node 10, so a year ago or so, um, it, it was even worse. Like we had a lot, we had a lot of global state. Um, Node just didn't really clean up after itself when it exited the process. And like, like one example of global state that was particularly bad is CLI options, because like like our CLI parser was like a total mess, and it was essentially like a list of global variables and, yeah, not great. And so like all of these problems, um, they are also problems that you have when you want to implement something like worker threads. So like you don't want to have global state because threading and global state is a terrible thing to mix. Um, uh, you, and like, boy, so, so one thing that changes with worker threads is like a thread can end at some point and it is not necessarily the end of the process. And so what you, what you don't want to happen is, is for resources that were allocated by a, um, by a worker to hang around after that worker is gone. Which is like, that's what you call a memory leak and you kind of want to avoid that. And so, and, and it essentially, like, what workers actually boil down to in the implementation is, like, you kind of want to embed Node into itself. You want to give Node the ability to create a new thread and then create a new Node instance 
inside that thread. And that's like pretty similar to what embedders actually do, which is creating and tearing down new node instances. OK, so people have tried this before. Um, there were two pull requests um, by, by Petka and Donov. Um, like, I think they were happening pretty, um, I think they were happening in the IOGS times, like uh, after the fork, before the merger. Um, unfortunately, they didn't really get anywhere. You can see, like, this was heavily discussed. There are 226 comments on that PR. And, um, well, it kind of just stalled out because I, I, I wasn't around at the time, but it seemed like it was basically a lack of people reviewing this code because it was like such a massive amount of changes that had to be made to Node. Um, there's also like alternatives that people have been working on. Like there's a lightweight implementation that is much closer to web workers, so where you actually have a much more limited API available in the workers, but it might be enough. Um, but yeah, so like a little more than a year ago, um, and I don't know how many people of you know that, but there was a fork of, of Node.js called IOJS. Um, it was like a couple of people were unhappy with some of the ways the, the Node.js project work. Um, and well, me and a couple other people, we actually said, okay, yeah, what is something that we could do that we would not really be able to do inside the, the main Node.js project? And well, we said worker support might be something for that because, well, people have tried it before. Um, people have requested that feature a ton of times, um, but like Node has never really gotten around to it. And so, yeah, we, we worked on uh, worker support. And we actually got to the point of having a like full implementation available. Uh, so yeah, uh, unfortunately that project kind of stalled. Um, like there weren't that many people actively working on it. And um, well, I, I mean, at some point I just like started getting paid to work on Node, uh, which kind of like shifted my focus a bit. <laughs> um, and okay, so at some point, um, this is like half a year ago or so, uh, we started parting this work to Node because like people were still wanting it. And like in a sense, the, the work had already been done. Um, it was like slightly out of date, but um, for the most part, yeah. Okay, so there, like, there was one big PR. There was a lot of work leading up to it, but essentially this one. And like, um, by, by now it has like a 270 upwards or so and one downwards. So I think it, like people like it. Um, um, yeah. Um, one thing to note about this maybe is like it's still experimental, and I'm gonna get into that, like what that means, more in a second. And like some things we are. Like some of us are kind of disagreeing on things like what the module name should be called, but again, gonna get into that in a second. It's so like what, what were the issues that we were seeing there? It's so like one thing that is tricky with Node is Windows support. Um, it's like we don't have that many people actively uh, making sure that things work and that um, well our, our cross-platform code works well. Um, so yeah, there, there was like, we had actually a two month block in there just because like nobody um, was able to like figure out some very particular issues on Windows. It's kind of unfortunate. Um, there was also the thing that like the, the module name worker or workers on NPM, they were already taken. And it's like, so far every time we have introduced a new module into Node, we have like been in this situation where we've been like, okay, yeah, we wanna have this module name but if it's like a module name for core, it's most likely already taken, so we have to talk to the people who, um, who own that module. And well, up until this case, that has never been an issue. Like for HTTP2, um, for example, there was an HTTP2 NPM module before. Um, and we actually, like we talked to the author and like um, they, they essentially provided the name to us, which was great. So you can actually use require HTTP2 and now in Node. Um, with workers, that was not the case. We talked to the person who owned the module, and they said, no. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate. And like, um, uh, yeah, so that, that sparked like a whole discussion that we had before. Like, we we're talking about like what to do for new modules. Like, should we use a scope 
namespace for that or something like that, like at Node.js slash something for new modules. I'm, I'm personally not a fan of that. I know a lot of Node.js core people are. Um, we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, but yeah, um, there were actually less issues with getting the main PR reviewed that I opened. Um, so like that went surprisingly smoothly. Um, it's available in Node 10 behind a flag for now. And so what we ended up with, okay, again, we have this like thing where there's uh, independent threads inside the same process. And well, because we have these completely independent things or almost completely independent, like separate node instances, um, we were not quite going for the web worker API. It's kind of similar to it, but it has some node specific works. And, like more importantly, inside the worker, you're not really limited to some specific kind of like limited API like web workers have. You can use the require, you can require all the core modules um, and like any NPM modules that you want to require. Um, so it's a lot more similar to like what you would expect in the main thread. And there, there are some exceptions of like what doesn't work, like it's mostly controlling per process state. Like I think you can not change environment variables from workers or uh, you can't change the current working directory. Just like this kind of stuff, which affects the whole process and you kind of don't want to have workers in a position where they can affect that. Um, as far as communicating between the different threads goes, and these are the things about workers that like actually make them special and um, filling actual use case gaps. Um, so you can transfer memory, you can transfer array buffers from one thread to another. Um, we actually do have shared array buffer support, so you can actually share memory between threads. Um, it is limited to binary data, but this is also like, it's a pretty powerful tool. And um, well, we also have Atomics available. So like this is, Atomics is like, if, I don't know if you've ever worked with like low level languages like C or C++ um, or other languages that have like classical threading. Um, well, Atomics, for one, it like, allows you to do some things um, concurrently in a like, more efficient day, way than like, using locking, like the traditional approaches. Um, and it also allows you to implement uh, things like mutexes and, and condition variables and all that stuff in, in JavaScript. Like, it's, it's kind of an odd feature for JavaScript because like, before this, you didn't actually have any features where you would say, like, okay, this call can block the, the event loop indefinitely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's um, a very low level thing. You probably don't want to work with it directly, um, but it is available. And uh, so these are standard things from the languages. Uh, we also have the, the message part and message channel APIs from the web. So like these are actually HTML standard um, things. And these are like used for communicating between different threads and um, yeah, well, we, we basically implemented the spec there, again, with like one or two Node.js specific works. Like they are actually event emitters and not event targets because we don't really have event targets in Node, this kind of thing. Um, okay, so uh, the API, and this is like actually like, I mean, there's more to it than, than these four lines, but this is the gist of it and you're actually like able to do anything you want to do with these lines. Um, so, um, we have this worker underscore threads module. This is the result of that naming conflict uh, that we had. Um, and so, like, it, it has a worker class, which is very similar to the worker class from the web, but again, not quite the same thing. And, like, and then it has a like, thing that is not the same as uh, web workers. We call it parent part. This is an instance of this message part thing. And um, well, I don't know if you've ever used web workers. You know that the way you communicate with the with the main browser context is that you actually set some global variables. I, I think it's called like window dot on message in uh, in web workers, something like that. And we like in Node, we're kind of reluctant to introduce new globals. Like it's not really something we want to do. Uh, so we, we provide this one object which people can use to communicate with the, with the main thread. Um, the, the main 
two ways of starting workers. Are, so like, you can either just use new worker and pass it a file name, and it, it, it's going to execute that file name as if it were the, the main script of some node process. Um, or you can pass it like actual code that you want to run in the worker. Um, th that's kind of like nice for demos and examples and stuff. But if you want, actu like if you write actual production code, you probably just want to use the file name variant. Um, well, if you pass eval true to to the worker constructor as an option, you're gonna get. Um, well, you, it's gonna just run the code that you passed in the first argument. Um, um, then okay, so for for uh, listening to messages and sending them between the different threads, you have dot on message and you have dot post message. These are just like very similar to the um, to the, the web APIs. So if you use worker dot post message and you pass it some data, well, it's it's still going to serialize that thing and send it to the thread and then de serialize it. Um, is this in a way that is like much more powerful than JSON? Like you can actually serialize like well more complex types like uh, typed arrays or circular data structures. It's the same thing that, that browsers use to transfer data to and from workers. And you can listen to, to events using like on message. Um, again, this is a node specific work. Okay, so let's, let's look in a, at an example. Um, okay, I don't know if, like, actually I don't know if people can read this because I know that um, well, if, if you're in the back of the room, you might have like, I, I don't know how small this is. I have the slides online and I've tweeted a link to it. So if you're like, if you want to follow along using your own machine, that should be possible. Mm. But okay, okay. So this is one of these examples that um, use the new worker constructor with a, with a string where there's just some code passed in. Um, and what it essentially does is, okay, so we create a new thread using new worker um, that the code inside that worker is essentially just, um, well, it is, it is listening for a message and when it gets a message, use on parent part, which is the, the communication interface to the main thread, it's um, gonna post that message back to the main thread. And, um, and, and then we, like, we install a listener on the main thread for that message that comes back, and we send a message, and well, it, it's gonna ping and pong back and forth. That's basically all that's happening. And so if you wanna run an example like this, because it's like this is still an experimental feature, um, then um, you have to use the node dash dash experimental worker flag. Um, th this is a more complex example, and I think I'm gonna skip it, because like um, I think I'm running a bit short on time. Um, again, like you can look it up in the slides if you want to. And this is one of these examples where you actually use a shared array buffer to uh, to to, um, to to share memory between threads and have them um, wait on each other using atomics. Like it, it, it's mildly advanced, and uh, I mean this is what this does. It um, it computes the the prime factorization of some number. It's like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to look at it, just look at the slides later. Um, okay, so workers are experimental. Um, what that means is that it's like technically we allow ourselves to make breaking changes if necessary, um, like even in non semver major release. Um, the, the truth is like there hasn't all been all that much activity in the last, I don't know, three months or so. So like the API hasn't changed in that time, um, which is hopefully a good thing in terms of getting out of experimental status. Uh, we're looking for feedback. If you have used workers and you have anything that you would like to say to us, like positive or negative or whatever, um, if, if like at least if it's like uh, not completely unhelpful, <laughs> um, please go to that issue and uh, feel free to comment and tell us what you think. Uh, if you have any like real world usage or any cool stuff that you built with it, just tell us. Um, but now we actually have DevTools support, so you can actually use the, the Chrome DevTools debugger to uh, inspect workers in Node. Um, as, as James mentioned on Monday, we're looking into some other things like the, the Weblogs API. Not sure whether we like whether that is going to happen or not. Um, probably when it's standardized. I, I don't know what the state on that is, to be honest. 
Um, things can be a bit tricky when you're using add-ons because like not all of them actually support workers and like work well with them because like add-ons. Well, add-ons have had a tendency to maintain global state um, simply because that was the easiest way to get things done. And there's like you can actually terminate threats before they well before they would normally terminate. You can use the terminate, and it's kind of like extra experimental because um, well a lot of node internals are not really built to to cope with sudden abrupt terminations of some thread that that just like don't uh, stop the process immediately. We're also like looking into things that are um, so like one thing that is supported in the cluster API that workers don't have yet is passing around um, what do we call native handles. It's like, for example, network sockets or, I, I think with cluster you can uh, pass around things like HTTP requests, something like that. We're not there yet. That requires some extra work in libuv. Um, uh, as James mentioned, deadlock detection, but that's a tricky topic on its own. Um, so just to quickly mention it, um, people have built other things with, uh, in this kind of direction. So like Alibaba has built a, um, a variant of V8 that um, actually allows sharing object, as has Microsoft. Um, the, like the Microsoft version is called Napa.js. I don't think the um, Alibaba variant has a specific name or something. So you can actually share JS objects between threads, which is super amazing, but like it requires engine modifications and we're not in a position to do anything about that like directly in Node. Um, don't think this is going to make anything magically faster. Um, I mean like worker threads, like they at least come with the overhead of constructing workers. So like if, if you do use them, um, think about using uh, a worker pool or there are some NPM modules that provide a worker pool for you. Like Microjob I think is one of the more popular ones. Um, if I got the name right. Um, please don't use this for parallelizing IO because Node is already pretty good at that itself. It's like don't, don't spawn worker threads to, to do synchronous IO in, in every one of the threads. Um, that, that might seem tempting but it's just like, uh, well, in the best case it's got to perform as well as Node but more likely it's, um, it's going to perform worse than when you just use the standard async methods. And well, it's spawning up the, the uh, it's, it's spawning up a new node instance every time you start a worker. So like there is some cost to it. We're, we're working on getting that down, but well, yeah. Okay, well, um, if you have any questions, uh, look for freshly dyed hair. And um, uh, well, there's my Twitter and everything. And uh, like I said, I've posted the slides there, so yeah.